Hello everyone and welcome to another high elo game of Age of Empires. Today we're rushing to the florist because we forgot to buy our wife flowers for Valentine's Day. But first, we're going to watch MBL playing as the Yellow Huns prepare to take on Mahai playing as the Teal Teutons. Now while the players heard their herdables explore their immediate surroundings and try to go up to Feudal as fast as possible, let's take a look at the respective Civ matchup we'll be watching today. Now, the Huns are a civilization designed to take the fight to its enemy with speed and mobility. Their cavalry archers get progressively cheaper starting in castle. Their trebs fire more accurately at units. And their stables work 20% faster, which is great because you can actually upgrade your Hunnic stables to produce the unique unit of the Huns, the Tarkin, a medium cavalry unit with high pierce armor and an attack bonus against buildings that makes it great at late game rating. Now, if your opponent tries to beat you by constructing a wonder or collecting all of the relics on the map, know that you can lame them by making wonder and relic victories take longer for all players and reducing the amount of gold generated by relics in half. Now, to support its military production, the Huns do not require houses. Since they start the game, take a look at the top of your screen with the full 200 population space already available, which frees up both wood and villager production time to focus on other things in those precious early minutes of the game, although this feature does come at the cost of 100 wood. Now, the Teutons opposing MBL, we have the Teal Teutons, a civilization very much like the Byzantines designed to take a beating and stay standing strong. All barracks and stable units get free extra melee armor in castle and imperial. Siege units can be upgraded to get a big melee armor boost. Towers have extra space for more units and fire extra arrows. And by the way, same applies to these guys, town centers. And murder holes and herbal medicine upgrades are free, so you can heal your units super fast in your castles while they are automatically protected against melee units. Now, these same Teutonic castles can be further upgraded to get even more range and actually fire arrows when garrisoned by infantry, which is kind of a big deal since normally only villagers and archer units garrisoned inside a castle will add arrows to that castle. Now, on the field of battle, all Teutonic units have higher resistance to conversion, and if they're hurt, can be healed by monks from twice the distance, which is great because the unique unit of the Teutons is the Teutonic Knight, a super slow but incredibly powerful heavily armored infantry unit, and these guys, to support their big military population, get 40% off all of their farm production. So... While we've been discussing the civilizations, both players up to 14 villagers, both players starting to explore the map, establish their bases. Let's take a look. <clears throat> As you can uh, hear from my raspy uh, voice, I am still on the cusp of recovering from the, uh, the cold that I had coming back from vacation. But neither here nor there, I've got my big glass of tea. So if you hear me gulping down something, that's probably a big glass of tea. Now, let's take a look at the bases, see where the players are situated, see if any particular one has an advantage or disadvantage. Mahai here in the southern position, completely open base. Uh, almost impossible to wall this off without expending a huge amount of wood. Primary gold, nice and safe in the back. Primary stone, a little bit off campus here to the left in a nice Cassiopeia W shape. Uh, for him now MBL let's take a look at his base also completely open to the north the west the south the east a little bit easier to wall off with this narrow wedge of land here this elevated piece of uh, real estate between these two forests his primary gold very much in the forward position his primary stone very much in the backwards position so I don't know that I would give any particular player here an advantage over the other a very interesting uh wall off being created here by our, by our yellow hunnic player i guess he's trying to create a siphon here so that anyone who tries to enter into this juicy productive area i mean this is an industrial zone if i've ever seen one you've got lumberjacks you've got berry pickers you've got even more lumberjacks being uh sent over here his basically entire civilian population is here to the east of his base with the exception of a few villagers who are busy hacking and hewing at these poor unfortunate instagrammable pigs with their adorable yellow bandanas now our teal tootin behind us now going up to feudal about 20 seconds or so ahead of our yellow hunt player building a castle uh, uh, barracks rather 
We'll see if he decides to wall off his any portion of his base. He's creating a bit of a longer wall off here, also funneling any opposing units through the town center so that they do take some kind of archer fire. Mihai, though, has discovered our yellow Hunnic player. Let's see what our yellow Hun has seen of his opponent's base. Just the town center, a little bit of the wall off. So both players have basically equal knowledge of each other's bases. Both players now in 3-2-1 have now both reached feudal a barracks immediately being built for our yellow hun who's sitting on 19 villagers same exact villager count for our teal Teuton. woodline being gathered to the west woodline to the east and he's starting to uh wall never a bad idea when you're playing the huns like i said they are in my opinion a sieve completely designed for speed and mobility to take the fight to you to get to castle and to just start pumping out heavy, heavy hitting units, uh, stables fat work faster, cheaper cavalry archers. You want to make sure that you are as walled off as you can possibly be. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself being ripped apart, shredded to pieces by these incredibly fast Hunnic units. In the meantime, though, our Hun happy to sit back on 22 villagers producing no military at the moment. Stable going down. But that's about it. Continuing to pump out villagers while his scout cavalry overstays his welcome a little bit too long. Takes a few swipes from these Teutonic <coughs> scout cavalries. Excuse me. And let's take a look at what our players are building. Now our Teuton is basically trying to wall off the entire uh, entirety rather of his base. And remember that when you see these uh, scout cavalry for the Teutons, this is basically as good as it gets for them when it comes to light cavalry. Teutons uh, do not get light cavalry. Teutons do not get hussars. This, if they want to raid with their light cav, is as good as it gets for them. Uh, the scout cavalry. Let's see what he can get done here. For now, our Hunnic player already has three spearmen out on the map, three scout cavalry of his own. I see a bunch of yellow dots streaming across the minimap we'll keep an eye on the both bases actually our Teuton circling the back let's see what he's trying to discover where he can go sees the wall off enters the kill zone yellow does not respond in time with the town center but does manage to wall himself off okay perfect placement here for the spearman by yellow but oh no they were on attack move i guess and now these uh, Hunnic scout cav trying to bust their way into the back of Teal's base. Mahai here doing a, a pretty good job. If you watch my videos, you know one of my biggest concerns with walling off. I mean, take a look at this huge chunk of map that he's walled off for himself. One of my biggest concerns with these is how the hell are you going to defend if this uh, house comes under attack or these palisades here? But Mahai has positioned his villagers in such a way that they're actually quite close. Does need to be careful, though. Uh, right as I say that, right as I sing his praises, I mean, come on, hurry up, villager. With a, Without the presence of any ranged units, though, these uh, attempts to bust into Mahai's base are going to prove very impotent. Although he is being a, a, such a pain in the butt... Mahai's wood count is really low because he has to keep building these secondary wall offs. Although now he's coming in with his scout cavalry. Let's see what he can get done. Two spearmen here should be able to shoo this away. This is not a fight that our Teal Teuton really needs or wants to take. Oh god, takes a poke from a spearman. Look how much HP he loses with just one poke. And now he's attacking the stable. Is our yellow hun behind this? What is he building? Two archery ranges. We know what those are for if we get up to castle. His army is quite weak, though, down about 80 HP. So if our Teal Teuton, who is sitting on an equal army supply, wants to make an issue of this, it's not exactly a, uh, you know, strong as it can be army here. And he's just letting Teal's units stream across the map. Teal is now moving forward. He's got ranged units, which is going to make defending this palisade a little bit tougher. Just because any villager that tries to come in this way is going to get tickled away by these four plus one range archers. 
and now the archers are on the home front deciding to defend against this in Hunnic incursion two of yellow spearmen die he doesn't care though he's sitting on six spearmen where are all these spearmen of his i only see the three uh scout cavalry here we've got six seven archers in production we've got two spearmen here next to the next to the town center a third patrolling this little gap between the tree stump and the palisade wall and where are the other three your guess is as good as mine if you see them on the map uh, oh here they are protecting the gold okay beautiful beautiful placement here by mbl by the way for his spearmen i love this uh preemptively defensive is what i would call this kind of strategy he knows his opponent is circling with scout cavalry and he's going to be in position to shoo this away with a tower here as well so any pressure that mahai wants to put on here has to go to the eastern portion of the map just because the south is look at this you got a tower you've got spearmen you've got giant structures blocking so there's no way he's gonna bust through that although in the east he's got a huge chunk of archers of his own here eight with the high ground advantage they are fighting at each other let's uh firing at each other rather upgrades identical for both archers at the moment and now there's a bit of a traffic jam does end up losing a villager oh no okay uh not sure this is a uh, fight he wants to take although two of these scouts are incredibly weak what are these dots in the middle of the map these are still the three scout cavalry of our yellow hun who is now a minute and a half away from castle getting further archer upgrades our blue blue rather teal tutan not too far behind about 30 uh some odd seconds we'll see what our yellow hunt can do with the 30 second advantage our teal tutan is just continuing to stream units across the map although his army supply is slightly below that of our hun villager count identical for both players sitting at 40 no relics for anybody Decent amount of uh, villagers on gold here. 12 to the 11 of the two of the uh, Huns. And let's see who wins this little fight. Oh, God. Look at the amazing micro out of Mahai firing at multiple targets at once. All three scout cavalry died at once. Two archers died at once. And for some reason, he's retreating. I, I don't know exactly why. I guess he suspects these are going to become crossbows any second. We are getting Bodkin, so they are going to have a stronger attack. But he did get give up the high ground here. Lots and lots of hills at the center of the map, which uh, is good for both players. And yeah, exactly. These yellow archers in 20 seconds are going to be crossbows. But in 25 seconds, all of these teal Teutonic archers are going to be crossbows as well. Currently, the upgrades are in favor of our Yellow Hun, although not for very long. In about six or seven seconds, these will be evened up quite nicely. And now they're exactly even. <laughs> How many crossbows do we have here? 15 to 16. So both players sitting at almost identical crossbow counts in the center of the map. A second town center uh, being built for our Teal Teuton, our Hun Happy to sit on just the one building an outpost in the back of his base smart move he wants to know he wants to see if there's going to be any kind of attack coming from the rear this is the posturing of a player who wants to be aggressive i suspect i uh, this map like i said impossible to wall off for yellow i mean take a look at these big open spaces so instead of that he's just putting up a an outpost i wouldn't be surprised to see one or two more or rather, I would prefer to see one or two more. And now we've got our first Hunnic Cavalry Archer streaming across the map. Let's see what he can get done with this unit. Uh, probably not much with just one. But for now, skirmishers on the way. Ballistics being researched, uh, completed for our Hun. And let's see what he can get done for now, though. It's our Teuton player. <laughs> You know, in the beginning of the game, I said the Huns are designed to take the fight to their opponent, and now our Hunnic player is playing quite defensively, and then I say the Teutons are designed to take a punch to the face, and he's the one who's doing the punching to the face. Third town center going up for him. Uh, not a huge fan of the location for this one. 
Although it does give him access to all these uh, oak trees. Would have maybe preferred to see it on the other side of the uh, houses here, just so you can have access to this gold. But we leave it up to the player to decide. Look at the HP on these crossbows. They're down 200 HP. Our Tutan player doubling down on crossbows, though, going up to 28. He is sitting at a villager lead at the moment by three. But take a look at our Hun building a Mangonel, Cavalry Archers, Skirmishers, Spearmen still from the original uh, m minutes of the game. And 13 crossbows for him. Our Tutan player needs to get something done. But again, look at the HP. They're at, sitting at half HP. There's not much that he can do here with these crossbows, especially now that Mangonels are out. This one cavalry archer. Uh, I sang your praises, buddy. Do something. Continuing to patrol, patrol the perimeter of his own base, getting a siege workshop of his own. And in comes Yellow. Let's see what he can get done with this small group of 10 crossbows, Mangonel. Where are all of his units? He's going up to 12 cavalry archers. Okay, they're inside the uh, ranges. They have not revealed themselves yet. Although they will reveal uh, the fact that he's gone, cavalry archers, now that he's going to start firing individual arrows down on these villagers. They're not going to take too much damage, but they, Mihai is smart enough to know that he can't stay here. Uh, if he does, it just basically invites more and more ranged unit, which is exactly what's happening. And now Mihai might be in a little bit of trouble. I'm taking a look at his uh, mini-map. This forest is no longer jackable. This forest is no longer jackable. This one is running dry. I mean, he's got this internal one, but this is not a lot. I'm trying to click on these. There's, what, about 2,000 worth of lumber here. But let's see. Artutin decides to come home. Circling the back of his opponent's base with his own crossbows. Doing quite a good job, actually. Eight kills on these guys. And uh, I don't know where these spearmen think they're going. Oh, what a, what a throw here by uh, MBL to waste these spearmen. Although, it was the point to keep these archers, these uh, crossbows, from running away so that these cav archers could come and gun them down. They are going, they are not playing any games, these guys. Take a look at the HP on these uh, crossbows. They are complete dog shit HP. But we've got a Mangonel. MBL has to be careful. Now we're entering a battle of micro. Who will emerge victorious here? Oh, God. <laughs> Mahai gunning down anything and everything with his uh, crossbows here. Managed to get the mangonel. Managed to get these crossbows, even though they're sitting on the high ground. But another replacement mangonel. Oh, does manage to get just the tip. Loses one crossbow. A second town center finally going up for our yellow hun, who now is sitting on 23 cavalry archers in total a fourth town center for our Tutan. okay i mean I, I said that i prefer this position the problem now for our Tutan, now that cavalry archers are out is that this is incredibly exposed would do well to maybe put up some some kind of static defense okay decides to kill the bear and this is the thing with uh, cav archers i mean they're not going to outrange this town center but what they will do is force all the villagers to start garrisoning because they don't have to arrange the town center. They can sit on the periphery and just fire away. Although, okay, MBL doing an interesting uh, move here, entering into the castle kill zone. Says, I've got enough HP here, 560 HP. But elite skirmishers out for our Teutonic player. Going up to 13 of them. Should be able to zone out. Oh, God, he Viper gates these uh, cav archers in here. <laughs> and now these elite skirmishers are going to have a field day. I mean, even if they don't trade out perfectly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you are trading gold intensive units for garbage units. MBL overstaying is welcome, although now he's busting in or trying to bust in here to the in the western portion. But these are still ranged units, and ranged units are notoriously horseshit at taking down structures. Very far back town center here for our yellow hun, who is now going up to his third town center. 
stable in the center siege workshop in the center oh now he's taking mangonel fire oh mbl needs to uh mbl needs to pay attention here i mean he's trying i i i don't know if he's trying to bust in or i don't know if he's trying to bust out so he can save these cavalry archers and any event ends up losing everything what a pickup here for our teal tutan completely destroying the offensive capability of our yellow hun for at least a second but in comes some fresh recruits 840 hp like i said they don't need to outrange the town center they just need to camp outside of it and that basically makes all of the territory inoperable here for our teal tutan who now moves forward with his elite skirmishers will shoo these guys away would be amazing if a, a uh, Manganel popped out right now, but no, he's instead going for a Scorpion. Not sure that's the right move. And Mihai finally taking additional uh, additional sources of lumber, but now that this area is safe, I mean, you can go back to Jack and Lumber here, no? Okay, our Teutonic player now finding himself having to defend against knights not a bad switch here from our hunnic player you know your opponent goes heavy into elite skirmishers so that he can counter the cav archers so what do you do you just build a big tanky melee unit like the knight to get rid of all the elite skirmishers and now our teutonic player has to run away i, I don't know what the hell he's doing here with these uh siege units Okay, husbandry going there, rather bloodlines going down for our Teutonic player, who is only sitting on six knights of his own. Oh, a bit of a traffic jam here. The knights couldn't engage, but MBL has to be careful. I mean, early game knights, and I mean, 37 minutes in, we're talking, uh, you know, castle age, early castle age knights with very few upgrades, plus one, plus one are going to take a lot of damage from Teutonic town centers, especially since they can garrison 25 villagers in here. But how is he going to answer these rams? The elite skirmishers are going to do jack shit against these rams. Beautiful, beautiful wall off here by our Teal Tutan using the distraction in the center of the map to take a minute and wall himself off, giving himself, like I said, a good opportunity, good time to take advantage and take this forest here this town center incredibly exposed this is not a strategy i think you need to uh or you want to use against the huns i would say if you're playing against the huns adopt a viper strategy of incremental expansion you know the viper notoriously known for his uh risk averse expansion although in recent games i've seen him uh expand outwards quite aggressively but generally speaking, the Viper, you know, he'll build a castle here. He won't uh, build a castle here if he doesn't have to. Okay, counterattack here by Mahai with a bunch of knights. We'll keep our eye on that. For now, though, all of the Hunnic cavalry archers get drawn back. Beautiful move by Mahai with six units. Manages to distract the entire army, although now they're, they're moving back. Has split them up into two. Okay. MBL realized that he was uh, overreacting a little bit. <laughs> these elite skirmishers <laughs> trying to poke away at these knights. Very funny. But yeah, I, I don't know about this expansion here to the right. I don't know how you can defend this when your main unit is an elite skirmisher. I mean, you've got plenty of knights, right? You've got 14 going up to 19 knights, but they're all here in the center. Oh, does get the uh, mangonel with one throw of the javelins here by the elite skirmishers they've got a retreat though not a terrible engage here for mahai i mean he's taking the worst of it and now mbl hitting imperial not a single castle for either player although mahai going up to almost 500 stone should be uh first to to reach the requisite resources uh, unless somebody uh, quote-unquote balances their economy but mbl first to imperial let's see how he uses his advantage okay bracer chemistry so he's uh doubling down on his ranged upgrades 
these cavalry archers are going to be incredibly powerful thumbring as well going uh being researched for him and amahai balanced his economy a little bit and decides to go up to imperial as well defending against this horde of greedy greedy gold mining villagers from his opponent here who tried a cheeky little move <laughs> i mean good for mbl for trying to take this uh contested gold but mahai i think is uh throwing away a few too many units here i mean take a look he is supply capped or was supply capped for a second at 200 population but 167 villagers for a Teuton player that might be a little bit too much here I mean, if, if you're planning on going heavy, you know, units like Paladins, if you're planning on going heavy Siege, maybe. But if the bulk of your army is still elite skirmishers, you cannot afford to have 170 villagers. Although, I guess if you're playing against the uh, Huns, you know you're going to get raided and lose these villagers. So, I guess you're preemptively building. But he's going, to a hun he's going up to 180 villagers. Finally does cancel some. I think realizes he's uh, going a little bit overkill here. Did our Teuton invest too much into uh, civilian population here? I mean, he is under attack to the west. He's under attack in the center. He's under attack in the east. Like I said, I absolutely hated this expansion. This is completely indefensible uh, against the Hunnic raid. A castle going down, or rather going up in the center of the map. And now our Teuton player with a castle of his own first to build and what are these cav archers doing they've managed to sneak into the back of the base a few knights a handful of cav archers more streaming in oh no I, I like i said a minute ago i think mihai is just throwing away too many units and he's going way too heavy into civilian population Okay, not a bad uh, shooing away of his opponent here with elite skirmishers. But again, take a look at this. I mean, this is exactly what the Huns are designed to do. They are designed to take the fight to you. They are designed to just hang out. Oh, this is atrocious. 180 villagers has become 140 villagers. M the problem for Mahai, his military count is not increasing. Oh, Lord, he is just being ripped apart. I mean, he's got the villagers, but... <laughs> oh, my God. I think he went way too heavy into villagers. I keep taking these fights with the elite skirmishers. It's not terrible. And now the Treb is coming out. First to Trebs, though, was Mahai. But where the hell is his Treb? It's defensive? Okay. Not sure where the hell this Treb thinks it's going into the welcoming arms of 19 heavy cavalry archers where were you going oh mihai i think uh i think just going way too heavy into villager count needed way more armies got two cavaliers finally he's got the resources to go up to paladin and like i said if you're if you're going heavy hitting units you don't need as many villagers uh, or rather, you can afford to have more villagers. If you're going trash, you don't need that many villagers. And take a look at his army. It's non-existent. We've got two cavaliers, four skirmishers, a scout cavalry for some bizarre reason uh, here. I don't know. Was that one of the original scout cavalry? In any event, let's take a look at the stats. We've got almost 100 heavy cavalry archers. Uh, okay, and let's not call them heavy. Well, the majority of the game, they were just cavalry archers. Then we've got Cavaliers, which were Knights. APM almost identical for both players. Kill count. Oh, man. Lately, I've had these uh, these numbers, 214, 124, that, uh, you know, would make uh, any dyslexic person have to pause. 214 kills by our Huns. 81 villagers killed. This might be why we saw our Teal Teuton tap out. 124 kills by our Teuton, only 11 civilian kills. Let's take a look at the economy. Fairly identical. I mean, MBL managed to get three relics, a thousand extra gold, not the game-ending uh, relic gold count 
But overall, e without that relic gold, I think their economies would be basically identical. But with that, he is about a thousand or so. There are about two thousand ahead of his opponent is our yellow Hun, who, like I said, designed to take the fight. I mean, look at this. Look at this beautiful amount of infrastructure. We've got eight archery ranges here. He's got villagers spread out across the map, and he knows that he can have these villagers spread out across the map because he's the one putting on the aggression. He's the one who took the fight to his opponent. 22 kills for this band of brothers. 56 kills for these cavalry archers. Like, I I mean, look at this. What the hell is Mahai thinking here? Uh, you need to build some kind of static defense. You need to build some kind of military. 61 army supply to eight. Doesn't matter if you have a million villagers. Uh, unless you're planning on a Flemish revolution, which last time I looked, the Teutons do not have access to. This was a, uh, I think, an overcommitment into civilian population by Mahai. I wonder if he didn't expect this much aggression out of MBL. Although, again, whenever you're playing a Civ like the Huns, you should always expect aggression. And take a look at Mahai behind this. He's got a town center here. He built a town center to the north a town center to the northeast, and he's just slowly, slowly encroached onto the map. A bunch of lumberjacks here with no uh, lumber camp, a couple of uh, crossbows, I guess, remnants from early Castle Age, but MBL deciding to play to the strength of his uh, civilization. Remember, again, these cavalry archers are cheaper, 20% off in Imperial. Upgraded them, basically fully upgraded. Right, we we saw all the university upgrades. We saw the archery range upgrades. We saw the blacksmith upgrades here. So these are very deadly killing machines. I mean, the fact that these guys have fifty six kills is bonkers. MBL swarming onto the map in late castle, early imperial pushes our Teutonic player back. Like I said when I saw this, I was not a big fan of this expansion here. I mean, how the hell do you defend this? What do you do here? I mean, aside from maybe building a castle here or a castle here to protect this gold, there's really nothing that you can do as the Teuton to defend against these fast cavalry archer units. I mean, they move on a 1.54. Where are his cavaliers? 1.35. So you will never catch these cavalry archers if uh, MBL decides to make an issue of it. But this is just disgusting. Look at all these villagers. No wonder he sees... Uh, Cav archers have 56 kills <laughs> when he clumps up his villagers in these huge amounts. And like I said, maybe Mahai thought that he could overcommit into villagers so that he could lose a few to raiding as opposed to, you know, having 120 and then losing 30 and being sub 100. He was at going, he was literally at one point going up to 180 villagers, which is absolutely uh, ridiculous. I mean, in any game to see that especially when your opponent is starting to swarm you with these Hunnic, cheaper, heavy cavalry units. Overall, MBL, though, playing to the strength of his Civ, gets the big W, but GG to both players. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips and make sure to subscribe and enable notifications so that you're notified of my latest uploads.